Hi everybody and welcome back to another video. I'm Mark Pensestadler from zenithowner.com. Today's video is going to cover the installation progress I have done so far on my UL Power 350 IS engine into my Zenith Cruiser. So the purpose of this video is not to show you every step of the installation of the engine. It's basically just to show you where I'm at right now and talk a little bit about the engine and show you the installation because if you're thinking about buying the engine or you have the engine and you're going to install it, Sometimes just seeing how somebody else did things can help a lot. So we'll go over the, uh, the fuel system, the oil system, and some of the electrical uh, wiring that I have run for it. So we'll turn the camera around and get started. All right, I'll start with just a quick general overview of where I'm at. Obviously the engine is installed and uh, the fuel lines are hooked up, the oil lines are hooked up, and some of the wiring is done. Some of it is not complete. So if it helps you in any part of this video, just go ahead and pause it and you can uh, take a look at how things are mounted or where things are mounted. I will say that the home built help video does help a lot, but there have been a lot of improvements to the engine and the firewall forward kit since that video has been made. So uh, a lot of the things in there are obsolete and I'll kind of point those out as we go through it. All right, we're gonna start on the firewall here with these two fuel pumps. The fuel is gonna exit the firewall right here and come into this, this manifold. And the reason it's not hooked up yet is because this manifold is about a half inch in diameter um, and it fits no other fuel lines in my fuel system. So right now I'm not sure exactly how I'm gonna connect that up uh, to the rest of the fuel line. But once it is connected, the fuel comes into the manifold and there's a primary pump and a backup pump. So one of these will be operating at a time. Let's just say this one's working. It goes through this filter here, up through the pump. And obviously there's another manifold on the top that connects them both together. It goes through this fuel line, through what they call a final fuel filter. Here's the fuel pressure sensor right here. Then the fuel continues up through this line here, feeds these two cylinders, goes through this crossover line here feeds these two cylinders and then with all fuel injected engines there's a return line this is the return line here goes through a one-way check valve so fuel can only flow in one direction and it goes down through here to a stainless steel fitting i have installed in the firewall now if you have the home built help video for the three, the ul power 350 is installation You'll notice that all the fuel and oil lines in the video are just steel braided lines that you have to cut and attach all the end fittings on. These fuel lines, uh, as you see them here, are exactly how they come in the new firewall forward kit. These fuel lines are made by Aircraft Specialty and they supply all those lines to Zenith who includes them in the firewall forward kit. So they're all fire sleeved, they're all cut to the right size, all the fittings are put on correctly, everything fits great. Taking a look at the front of the engine here for the oil system, we have the oil cooler. The firewall forward kit provides these two steel brackets to mount it on. I had mine powder coated black, and then the, uh, the radiator here is mounted on these big huge rubber blocks which provides a little bit of movement and I guess cuts down on the vibration of that cooler. These lines again are made by Aircraft Specialty. They come already uh, finished just as you see them here. There's nothing I did to them. There's a spacer that's included with the engine right here that has to be put on. It goes between the oil filter and the engine case there. That's a relatively simple task to do. There's a fuel temperature sensor behind there. And the oil pressure sensor is mounted remotely. You can see where it comes out of the engine here on the bottom and it's mounted over here on this plate. And they mount it remotely to protect it from vibration. And one of the things you'll note how I have mine zip tied to the, uh, the engine mount here, it's, it's tight and very secure, but I'm not sure if having this zip tie on here will reintroduce the vibration to it or not. So I may have to cut that zip tie and just kind of have this free floating. Well, I guess the electrical system all starts with the battery. Here's the battery mounted on the firewall. Zenith gives you this little mount on the bottom and they use four stainless steel rivets to attach it. I felt better having um, nuts and bolts on there, so mine's screwed on. You can see there's some cork in between there and there's also cork behind 
this yellow piece that attaches it to the firewall. So I have the ground strap from here to the ground lug on here. On the back of here is one of those forest of tabs, they call it a, just a ground block for all the electrical components in the airplane. I don't yet have the ground strap from the engine to the battery. I have to put that on yet. Here's the positive lead to the master relay. And then this one here goes to the starter. This one powers what I call the distribution bus. And I'll kind of go over that when I do a, um, a video on the panel. And this is just the wire from the master switch that activates that relay. All right, here's where most of the wires exit the firewall. There are, of course, a bunch of wires over here that exit. Those wires are mostly go to the, the engine ECU, which I'll show you in just a minute. But with these wires, I bought one of these stainless steel firewall exit kits. It comes with this little exit part here and then the fire sleeve and the hose clamps. Once it's all done, I'll probably put the red RTV on here just to seal it up. But the wires come out. These brown wires you see here are for the EGTs and CHTs. So four of them split off this way and come up here. These are all dyne-on. You can see how nicely they mark them. You know exactly where they go. And then the other four come across here over on this side, and they will go to those cylinders. This is a 60 amp shunt that comes with the dyne-on equipment. And this is kind of an optional part you may or may not want to put on. Um, even Dynon says it's optional. As you know, the shunt is used to, for the ammeter to measure, depends on where you hook it up, but you can see the, uh, the draw on the battery or the output of the, the regulator rectifier. Um, I had it, so I installed it. Um, but like I said, even Dynon says it's kind of optional. You can just use a voltmeter if you want to see if the battery's charging or discharging. There's some other wires in here, mostly ground wires or power wires to the oil uh, temperature, or no, the oil pressure sensor and the fuel pressure sensor that go along on this side. Behind the firewall is the red ECU, the engine control unit, comes with the engine. You can see it's mounted on four little rubber feet to cut down on vibration. There's two big cannon plugs here that come already all assembled from UL power and you just route them. You drill a big hole through the firewall and then they give you this piece here that closes it up. All this is pre-wired, installed on the engine. All this is already done. The only thing I did was add this wire here which controls the starter relay. So this goes back to the key switch. But all this is already bundled and connected. All these sensors that are on the engine are already installed and wired. Originally I installed this ground block here and I had a wire coming from here over to this rivet that I need to finish drilling out. Uh, then I learned that it's probably not a good idea to use the airframe as a ground. So I took this wire off and I put this wire on here, which just goes back over and it connects to that main ground lug over there. So everything is grounded at one point. All right, here's the throttle. It's right here. This little piece just connects to this rod here. It gets secured in this little aluminum piece and three rivets get put on top. Eventually I'll put two clamps here to hold that. And then it comes back here through the firewall. Now the reason this isn't complete yet is that I bought one of these to put on here. I thought I'd have a real nice professional, you know, exit on the firewall. But it doesn't fit because um, this part fits through here. But you can see on the end of this cable, these big ferrules on here, those do not fit through here. So this thing is completely useless. And I have to figure out another way to make this come out of here. Maybe just a rubber grommet sealed with some, some high temp RTV. But then that comes back here, obviously, and just goes into the panel. Now you can see I have the EGT probes installed into these pipes. Uh, the muffler is not attached yet. And the reason why is that you can see up in here, there's four Allen screws. I need to find a tool to where I can get up in there and take those out. Then all of these pipes come off and there's new copper crush washers that UL Power provides to put on there. So 
Once I take those off, I'll put the new washers on, reinstall the pipes, I can attach the exhaust, and then start hooking up these uh, EGT probes. This engine has two big ignition modules. Each one controls four cylinders, and obviously there's two spark plugs in each cylinder. These big plates come with the, either come with the engine or the firewall forward kit. I had mine painted white to match the engine mount, so it looks pretty. Once I get the engine baffles installed, these wires all go through the back of the baffle, so I'll, I'll work on those after the baffle. Along with the oil system here is a air oil separator. You can mount this pretty much anywhere you want. I have it mounted right back here. This uh, vent goes back into the top of the engine here. And I guess the extra oil comes back here and goes back into the case. One of the things that's a little you have to be careful about is this tube comes out and ends right here, which kind of shoots this line right into this spinning gear. So I'll show you on the other side how I have that clamped away from the gear. Here's the other side here, just to keep that away from the gear, I have it clamped to the side there. It almost looks like it's running into the gear, but there's a, I don't know, a half inch or so of space between it. It's not gonna move anywhere. All right guys, I'm running through everything here fairly quickly because I actually made this video yesterday. It was 17 minutes long. I have a 15 minute limit on YouTube, so I had to cut a bunch of stuff out. And I tried about four or five times to upload it to YouTube and it failed every time. And I wound up deleting all the files, so I'm actually filming it again today. But hopefully this helped you. This is an overview of where I'm at. Obviously there's a lot of work to do yet with the finishing up the exhaust and the baffles and some of the other wiring. But uh, everything was fairly easy to do. It, engine mount fit perfectly. It fit to the engine perfectly. It fit to the firewall perfectly. So it was uh, an easy task to actually install the engine. And hopefully, you know, they say a picture is worth a thousand words. So hopefully this video will help you get a good, good look at the UL Power engine. I'm real happy with it. UL Power has been real nice. And uh, Ray at UL Power, I want to give a, a quick thank you to him because um, I've talked to him on the phone a couple times and emailed and he's very, very helpful.